energy and that um, sometimes I feel like I don't know where that song just came from. And, and that's what that's, I'm talking about. Yeah. So, Can you talk about a time when that happened? Um, it's more, it's kind of in retrospect when you go to think of... Hindsight, yeah. Yeah, like when, when did I write that song? Like how did I... How, how did that happen? That it's almost like you black out a little bit in the moments that that is developing, but then it's you know with technology it's kind of crazy because you can go back and listen to the fifty voice memos you have of the song developing. But I will say what, something interesting about that is that I find sometimes if I'm just at home or in here just strumming chords, just like I'm gonna just play and not play a song I know, just start to strum chords and and sing you know nothing over it the things that I start to sing over it are sometimes like brilliant or things that I end up using and that's when I don't understand where that came from that's not conscious mm -hmm. so that's very well articulated how often does that happen um I don't know I, it, I it's hard to say again like because it you might you might start with something you've written and you might sing that, but then other things develop from that that you're not conscious of. So it's really hard to pinpoint what you know what happens when and how often. But um, or like you might have an idea, sing it, other things happen, and then you go back and listen. You hang on to one or two of those ideas that came up, and then develop more from that. So it's like this subconscious and conscious thing of working back and forth. That makes sense. That's the multidimensional self. Can you can you play a tune for us? Sure. Yeah. Yep. You want to talk about what the germ of this tune? Um, this is a new song actually that um, is about some, I guess, pretty recent experiences um, in dating someone that um, I just I I find their struggle. I don't know. It's just that it's a combination of a lot of things. <laughs> it just is what it is. Yeah. You know. Um, okay. You find their struggle what? Their struggle in life. I don't know. So it's about their struggle in life or, or it's, it's not really about, it's about a lot of things in, in my, in my experience with them. Let me just tune real quick. Do you want to ask me anything while I'm tuning? Nah, you have your own tuning. Right? It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like experimenting with pedals, but that's fun. I know, I like it. Like, you're really on your way. <laughs> What's the name of the tune? Um, no name? Right now it's called Born Wild. That's all I got.
Scotland. I mean, you're blowing my mind right now. Well, thanks. Hey, um, so one of the L's on my program is is love, and I wanted you to talk about your concept of love. Ooh, 
Um, love. How do you bring love to the world? Um, I think that, I think that I'm a, an extremely genuine person, so. Clearly, if you allowed me to come and, and hang, I mean, you're like, yeah, go, you know, but trusting too. Yeah, trusting, I, I trust people. Um, Where did that come from? Has that always been part of your constitution? Yeah, I think um, I've always been a very pure person. I mean, I have my dark sides, but the, those sides are not hidden from people. And so whenever I relate to people, it's, I, I don't have, I don't have walls. I don't have, you know, I don't know. I don't have, I'm not fake. There's nothing. I'm just me yeah. all, all the time. And I think that's how I express love. And I think that there's just, I don't know. I try to be very generous. I feel really lucky for the things that I have and being able to play music. And I don't know. So I just try to be as generous as possible with, um, my friends and people that I meet and so it's called authenticity yeah. I mean you're being authentic yeah yeah definitely. um you, you know um I feel the presence of your mother here um and I wonder about if she you know I'm always fascinated with everybody's internal time feel I know you um those loops are extremely intoxicating I thought you were talking about drum loops and I hate electronic drum machines there's nothing worse than that because each human being has their own internal time feel mm -hmm. and i wanted to know if your mom was helpful early on maybe when you were in the womb or even as a kid how if she helped you develop your own internal time feel because you have very good time um probably i think i mean it's funny actually when she was pregnant with me she went on a silent retreat um where i don't know i she was living in Ohio at the time, so. I'm so it was like sure. a uh, it was like a silent meditation. Yeah. In like, I really would love to know where. I mean, because there's one in called uh, Diamond Mountain in Bowie, Arizona. My buddy went for three years. Oh wow. And his girlfriend lived twenty feet away, and he couldn't talk to her. So she was so she was actually in deep meditation. She was in deep retreat. Yeah, but she she's Christian, so it was probably something like with her church or something at the time, but. Um, I don't know. I mean, my dad also has, he doesn't admit it, but he, he has rhythm. He played drums when he was in high school or, uh, like middle school or something. And I always try to convince him like you're musical, even though he kind of refuses, he's such a business guy. He kind of refuses to acknowledge it. He wants to bury the, the infinite artist in it, the creative yeah, in him. Yeah. It's a shame. Cause he's, he is creative in, yeah. In his own ways of business and like thinking the way he thinks about things um, is very creative. But yeah, I don't know. My, I will say um, my mom that that she, like I said, she taught us how to harmonize. And something I wanted, I, I was thinking about actually as I was singing the last song, something we touched about upon before with vibration. Um, <clears throat> I've talked with people about sometimes just singing the actual vibration of singing um, is enough to get out whatever, it doesn't matter what words you're singing or whatever, just the vibration of that is the most important part. If you're, if you're in the state of using music for therapy, you know, if I'm just like feeling like shit and just singing, that vibration is really important to me. Um, and that's also, I think, why I love harmonies so much when they lock in, like that locking in is, that's divine to me. So that's something my mom certainly instilled in us and taught us. She, she would harmonize to like a rap song if she, like if it came on. Um, so I think that that's really what she kind of gave to it. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, I mean, is, do you have a, like, I, I didn't look it up, but I mean, you're, you, when I first reached out to you, you were in Europe. Um, you know, do you have a touring band? H how does a touring work for, for you? Well, this whole project started as a solo project for, um, so th for the last year and a half I've toured solo and that's really, yeah, that's partially why I, I do the loopings because I like the fullness of the harmonies and stuff and being able to play over them. 
Um, and then more recently, this past spring, I had a tour with a, another band. We, we booked it out together as a kind of double bill, yeah. and we shared a band. So that was really fun. So we went through the South. Um, I'd play with the band, and then he would play with the band. So, I mean, we're... One thing that I'm concerned about these days is this sort of pay-to-play mentality, yeah, or you can play for the door. That's New York, right? But on the set, on this, on those gigs, were you paid? Were they gigs, or were you, or were they essentially? Sometimes they were, like, there was. Rarely are there guarantees. A lot of times it's a, but like we played in Chattanooga, and the other lead band guy, he was from Chattanooga, so we made like. I made, I made like 250 bucks or something like that. That's a lot. That's great. That was good. Yeah. Um, the rest of the time, you know, you're lucky if you make 50 bucks. Yeah. So. And the problem today also with artists too, they have to wear about seven different hats. They, they really can't focus on the, when in the past, all you needed to worry about was crafting songs. Uh, and, yeah. and I just, you seem to me like you've been gifted and, and blessed in your life so that maybe you actually do have a little bit more space in your head to write. Yeah, I mean... I mean, I guess what I'm saying is you're not working another gig. Right, I'm not working, and that part is... I'm so grateful and lucky... I mean, that's... And that. there's nothing to apologize about that. This is this is what... It, it, how, has, how has it given you... Setting aside all the promotion and all that other stuff, I mean, being able to just focus on your infinite artistry, how, is, how has it been helpful for you, and how have you grown? Well, I actually, I think sometimes it can be um, challenging because of the lack of structure. And so in that way, wearing a lot of different hats for this kind of helps because it's like, I know I have to do emails today. I know I have to do this. So it adds structure to my world um, so that when I can fit in writing, that's, it's, I appreciate it more. Um, and I feel actually lucky because I have other friends who are in similar situations, but they're not able to, I think I have my dad's brain of business that I can get shit done. And I, I know how to, I know how to see five steps ahead and start with the first step just to get there. So I have that mentality. So it's like, I'm very much artistic, but I'm also very much, um, goal, like goal oriented. Yeah, and. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but that, but it, it, it's not really in a bottom line sense, in a business sense, where you no, just close just, a deal. Where it's just moving forward with it. Right. So all. what's, where do you, how, explain, if you want to let the cat out of the bag, explain how you need to move forward. Well, what, my, where are you at? Are you, st are you still a step one? Are you a step two or three? Or where are you at? Well, I don't know. I don't know how many steps there are. So you don't? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but um, I feel my, my next goal, really, um, well, I just put out a record in April. So with that, there was like, okay, let's tour it. So I toured the Northeast, I toured the Southeast, I toured, I just got back from the UK and France. My next goal... As a solo? solo. Um, actually, in the UK and France, this um, woman that I met recently has become a, my drummer. Wow. So it was just me and drums, and she was... Whoa. Awesome. Do we have, we have audio of that or video? Yeah, there's a... Um, it'll be released pretty soon. As so, do you know So Far Sounds? It's like a... They're like private shows. I don't know. They, they film... They, Either say you, we can get me a you. copy immediately. I need to see it immediately. I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, so no bass, just drums and and you. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so that was really fun, and you know, figuring that out with her of like how to manage that and make it sound cohesive was interesting. Um, and you're playing different stages every night, so the sound is different. Can you hear oh, yeah. yourself? I, I prefer doing my sound myself because I know my pedals, yeah. and a lot of times a sound guy will just. I mean, you, you're kind of a control freak in your own way. Well, yeah, I, ha I mean, I have to be I like a little it. bit. Like, I know, I don't always know what I want before mm -hmm. I hear something. But once I start to hear it, I know where I want it to go. Um, but my next goal, really, is I would love to find a band that's, like, the next level to open for and take me on tour as solo or with a drummer or whatever. It seems to me you need to add a, a couple of... Of serious cats that can that aren't wanking it, but that they can they can improvise so that you know the strong the songs can really breathe and stretch out. Well, I mean, I've I've had that as a band, but like as far as touring, because I also like when I have a band, I pay them, so I have to keep in mind of 
how much I can afford. Absolutely. So on as far as touring goes, like I, you know, I will do it however it makes sense. I mean, obviously with a band, it makes it m more fun in a lot of ways, but um, if it means that like I'm spending two or $300 a night to pay the people to play with me to like five people in the audience, it's, I have to think about that. You know, um, before we wrap up, I just wanted you to talk to the people out in the world about how the insecure path is the secure path for Katie Shotland. I mean, basically, you could be dwelling. I mean, you're you're bright. You could be doing uh, addiction research, or you could be doing anything. And like I think you said, it was easy. You know, it was just sort of. I mean, you could be doing what society says you should be doing, and you're not. And I want to know how much healthier. I mean, there's a, you have a light to you, so you're obviously glowing, and it obviously is therapeutic. Tell me, I'm wrong. Has it been feeding you to take the the, the road less traveled? Yeah, I'm def I mean, I was, I, I wasn't myself until I was started playing music. That's, that, you found your purpose. Yeah, I found my purpose. I it really it came down. To, I, I back when I was about thirty two, thirty three, and I, I had this band. Maybe I was like thirty four. Actually, I had the band. I'm playing music. I had a life coach because I was lost. I just, I was like, I, I have time. I have talent. I have a brain. What do I do with it? And she was helpful in, she pointed out every time you come to me, we start, we end up talking about music. And she said, when you play music, do you feel like you have purpose when you're on a stage singing? And I said, I realized my heart dropped into my stomach because I realized that that was the only time I felt like I had purpose. And I realized at that point that like I had to do it and there was not, there was nothing there was nothing else to do. <laughs> so it was, it was scary. It was a scary, scary realization. But if I didn't, you know, it's, it's worse on the other side. So it's a scary avenue to go down. Um, do you feel that the universe is protecting you? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, yes, I feel incredibly lucky. Taking that into, what I'm saying is when you take that leap. Yeah. You need to have to be, and there needs to be some divinity there. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and luck. And yeah. like and timing, yeah. Timing and and hard work. Like I work very very hard at at this and trying to develop myself. Um, I I do think a lot of times artists kind of ride on talent and try to and just assume that they're going to be found or discovered and and that they're just good enough. And I I find that really offensive and I don't know. <laughs> like you have to work hard at it. I mean, yes, you could be very lucky and all of a sudden things happen for you and that's wonderful but that I don't think that's authentic I think that's just kind of I don't know being a little spoiled <laughs> well if that makes sense yeah I mean it, it was absolutely um wonderful Katie to you are divine and it, I, I wish you so much luck in your uh growth as a musician and uh, as a leader as a band leader um okay. so you can um keep feeding yourself spiritually and um uh, I look forward to being, uh, to help chronicle it and help you grow. Thank you. Thanks for coming and listening and talking with me. It's the Jake Feinberg Show. See you later.